What's up everyone, uh, Snipe Trading here. Um, I'm gonna go over my monthly recap of February. Uh, February was a green month for me. Um, and this is where I started my YouTube uh, videos. So um, I started on the 31st of January. So I, I just included the 31st here. Um, and okay, so I'm gonna go over a little bit of my stats and then afterwards I'll go over um, things I did well and things what, what things I can improve on. Um, so, uh, overview, so the total P&L of this month was 1,068, um, so the total wins was, came out to be 1,926 and my total loss is 858. Um, so my biggest win day is 235 and my biggest max lock day is negative 295. Um, my average is 138 and winners and uh, an average of $143 of loss. So that, that, that comes out to be a pretty much almost yeah, a one to one ratio. Um, and my winning days is 14, 14 days and total trading days is 20. So I have a 70% winning days. Um, so this is just uh, the days and it's not exactly um, the trades in in these. There, there's multiple trades. Um, but what I would like to see in the future is uh, a higher higher win-loss ratio. Um, although I'm, this is profitable because I have higher winning, uh, winning rate. Um, but eventually I want this to be at least, you know, a one and a half or two ratio and uh, having a two and a half ratio uh, realistically will bring down your winning days um, potentially. So it, potentially uh, even a 50% winning day with a two to one ratio, uh, you could still be profitable with. Um, so, so what things that I did well today, this month? Um, so keeping green days green. So. Um, as you can see, a lot of I have a lot of green days, um, and that's because I didn't try to overtrade. Um, when I'm green, uh, and I think I'm I'm good uh, for the day, I just uh, try to walk away. Um, and things I can improve on that is like yeah, not to overtrade. So during slow days, I think uh, during this day it was a really slow day. Um, and then I over traded and boredom trade and then just uh, joined into like low quality setups and that that in terms of, like create you more loss and that builds you um, get uh, a bigger loss each each time and that that can really uh, emotionally drain you um, so another thing I did well was patience so some some setups I patiently wait until it um, you know, hold a prior support or resistance uh, on a flag break pattern, and that helps me out. Um, just being patient and not going in too early, uh, which can fail the pattern. Um, things I need to improve on: uh, adding to losing positions. So I think uh, this day here, uh, I was actually losing um, or down on my trade. And then eventually, I just kept adding, averaging up. If I was if I was short, I was averaging up, um, and then averaging up, and eventually, the the share size is pretty much not what I normally share uh, trade in, and that eventually creates a bigger loss and uh, pretty much uh, be a big red flag for the day. Um, the good news is uh, I set a $200 max limit for my account. So anytime I hit that threshold, my account will be locked from entering any trades. Uh, I can still exit trades, but from entering any trades, I'll be locked out. Um, so another thing I did well is pretty much stopping out. So when it, it breaks support or resistance um, and it goes my way and then if it somewhat didn't go my way afterwards. Uh, I was pretty good uh, on certain days. 
on slopping out there. Um, and yeah, pretty much, yeah. When sometimes if the pattern seems like it, it wasn't uh, going the way I like would like to, it to go, then eventually I would like to stop out, you know, uh, ahead of time because uh, maybe it's setting up uh, the opposite bias of what you're trying to uh, do. And if, if you play both sides short and long, you kind of know, okay, this is, if you're in short and it's forming like a flag pattern for a long, yeah, you should like exit because if you were a long player, you would probably be longing it, right? So as a short, if you're in short, um, you should be able to stop out if you see that forming. Um, another thing I did well is scaling in and out of trades. Uh, I, um, before I, I, I didn't do um, scaling, I just did like one trade and one out, trade in and out. Now I try to uh, size in small, uh, get a feel for it, and then add more if I feel confident or if the pattern is playing out. And I seem to did uh, pretty well on that uh, scaling in um, and not like just go like 100% full size into uh, maybe you know if the front end, front side of the move, uh, which can stop you out. Uh, another thing is I need to improve it on is just uh, when I, I feel I did this a lot the past week. Um, the I, I see a perfect setup and I didn't pull the trigger, so I had to learn to just take the risk because um, I have a defined loss. Uh, from prior support so I know what's my loss ratio and um, there's many times where I sh could have pulled the trigger and I didn't and I lost an opportunity and you know sometimes you get the uh, FOMO fear of missing out and and it can go bad if you do that but I'm, I'm learning my best yeah no chase try not not to chase you know uh, so yeah so this goes in uh, goes in tune with uh, stopping out when it goes against you. So if, if a pattern is like forming along uh, your opposite bias, um, sizing down or removing your ads uh, can help help you control your size and control your emotion because your, your loss would be smaller if it's going against you and then maybe it'll pan out your way afterwards. Um, another thing that will help me uh, pull the trigger is to use stop loss order or not stop orders to enter uh, a position. So an example of that was uh, CIF here. Uh, CIF, uh, I had um, sort this. So CIF, I had an order. So here, this triggered. So I did a trigger uh, stop order. Um, my stop trigger was 271 with a limit of 274. So you can see here, it's a perfect spot to buy and that's because I used a stop limit order and it was during a breakout. So I used a 271 and it, when it hit 271, it triggers my limit order of 274, the maximum I buy. And I actually got feel better which at 273 um, and that, in terms uh made a great entry and i, I just uh, uh comfortably sold on the uh rip up um so i've seen a lot of these patterns where i missed it because i didn't pull the trigger here and then when it runs i didn't want to chase and buy uh, up here so this uh using a stop order to enter like if you have a high confidence of pattern then use that to help you enter trades um, so another thing I did, uh, well was to size in properly. So as you can see here, you see my average win and, uh, loss is around 140. And then you can see roughly, uh, it's minimum of like 50 to 200 or 300 maximum, uh, range of win and loss. And that's because of, uh, I, I learned to size correctly. Um, before when I started trading, I, my, my win and loss wasn't this kind of big. Um, I was probably more in like $30 and $50 uh, range. Uh, now I've been more confident uh, in 
bigger numbers here and yeah it's not a marathon i mean uh trading is a marathon and not a sprint um so eventually these can add up and then once you get confident you can scale up so if i'm more confident on a pattern i can scale up you know instead of 500 share i could do a thousand shares and that will increase my uh, win loss range to maybe yeah 200 to 500 and that's how you can scale up as a trader when you get more confident um and and another thing that helped me uh, with my size is the hotkey so if any of you staff trader i can help you set this up but pretty much i have um these are my buy on the ask um at certain risk level and it uses it uses uh, the click to trade um, uh, feature that I have. So when you click on here, you can see it changed 277. So if I click like, two, 251, so if I click, uh, click here for my stop and then I click here, it will automatically adjust the my share size and based on this stop and based on your the the ask so that automatically if you're in a like a really high a fast moving uh, ticker and you need to enter the trade and you don't you don't have time to calculate this is the best tool um, to do to do this so I have it to enter on the ask and then enter on the bid as well and this is the opposite of short so enter on the bid and uh, short on the ask and then these are taking positions off, uh, full position off, 50% uh, position, 25%. So a quarter, half, and then a quarter, half again on the ass. This is on the bid, and then same as the uh, short side. But yeah, that's been really useful for me. Um, another thing I did well, or need to do well, is taking profits along the way. So there's a few days here, like maybe this day and this day, where the stock went my way like right away or pretty much uh, I was in the money and I was up $50 or 100 and I didn't take my shares off. And eventually it, it bounced back where I was like even and then I went negative afterwards. So I shouldn't have let that like hurt me I should have taken half off or like a quarter or a third um, to protect my profits but um, sometimes it just um, it's it's rough sometimes and that can emotionally like drain you and then maybe you're gonna add more on that pop where you're even and then it, it just becomes really bad um, but yeah, overall, I think it was a great month. Uh, hopefully I can bring these learning to my next month of trading. Um, up $106, 70% win rate. I think it's a pretty good, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to maintain this. So uh, I hope this video will help uh, a few traders out there um, on some of the learning process. And I uh, started making these video YouTube videos to help me uh, reflect on my traits and that's the main purpose and to become a better trader by you know keeping uh, a video journal for myself and you know to uh, recap the month and just uh, reflect on how well you did and, or what you need to improve on. So as always guys, uh, thanks for watching and I know this is a longer video than normal but uh, I'll see you guys next month. Bye.